Welcome to everybody and thank you for being here with us today. My name is Diletta Lundari and I work in Lauma Sales Department and today I'll be your moderator for this event. As you know, our webinar today will be about Lauma's Way Transmitter. After an initial general overview, we will go deeper in detail, uh, analyzing single channel and multi channel way transmitters. Um, it's now time to start. I give the floor to Mr. Pietro Grottoli, who is uh, the speaker of this meeting. Okay, so again, welcome to all of you, and thank you for taking some time to be here with us today. I sincerely hope it will be time well spent. As Diletta said, my name is Pietro Grottoli and I'm the head of the Lauma Sales Department. And today I'm going to introduce you our complete range of weight transmitters. We have chosen this argument because the weight transmitters are a key product in our range. With the passing of the time, we have uh, continuously invested in the development of these products. And we have seen a continuous growth, both in terms of sales volume and of interest from the market worldwide. For such reasons, we felt it was important trying to describe you the full range and the specific features, model by model. As we will see, the variety of weight transmitters that we can offer is quite huge. So we hope that this introduction will be helpful for you in order to recognize immediately which is the right model according to your specific needs. So after this, again, introduction, it's time to start. And uh, we can start from the basis. So what is a weight transmitter? Probably the main part of you already knows it, but for the ones who don't, a weight transmitter, as described in this statement, is an electronic instrument equipped with one or more inputs for load cells and at least one analog or digital output used for the connection to transmit the weight data to a PC, a PLC, or any other management device. Some story. So, the long story of Lauma's weight transmitters started more or less 30 years ago, in the 1992. The very first model sold by Lauma's was the model TP, which was a very simple blind weight transmitter with an analog output. The calibration was done just using trimmer and dip switches. And at that time, it was necessary to use a multimeter to measure the milliamps or the volts coming out from the transmitter in order to complete the calibration successfully. With the passing of the years, we have added other models as the TPZ or the TPS with higher performances and more bit resolution and we also added the first models with serial output, so RS-232 and RS-485, with ASCII or Modbus RTU protocol. But all of these transmitters were exclusively blind. The first Laumas weight transmitter with a, uh, with a display was introduced on the market in the early 2000s. It was the model LCD-1. It was a limiting device, especially made for lifting equipment, equipped with a serial output, relay output, and a small display to visualize the weight. But in this story, the real first milestone in the development of Lauma's weight transmitters was the 2011. So, uh, just a few years after the opening of our R&D department, we market the first weight transmitters completely made in Laumas, projected, developed, and designed by our R&D. This kind of action 
allowed us to do a great step forward. The new Laumas weight transmitters were all equipped with a display and a keypad or buttons for the calibration in order to simplify the life of the installers. We realized installing converters and other components granting higher performances, both in terms of transmission speed and resolution. And last but not least, this is another key point, they were equipped not only with serial and analog output, but also with field buses like Profibus, Profinet, Ethernet IP, and so on. We will see it later. So, thanks to these new products, and to the widespread use of the PLC in the industrial sector, the sales of our weight transmitters are grown significantly and very quickly. Another milestone for us was certainly the year 2016, when we started marketing our multi-channel weight transmitters. We will see during this presentation that such transmitters can grant a lot of advantages if compared with single channels. During the same year, we also put on the market our first weight transmitter integrating a Wi-Fi communication model, which is the TLKWF. The last milestone in this evolution is dated 2018 when we started producing the low cells digitizer model LCB that can be integrated directly to the low cells body. Another great step forward that we do not see in the slide is uh, dated uh, 2019, so one year ago, when we completed the realization of our configuration software called Instrument Manager. This software, which is completely free of charges, is very helpful for you to, to configure and backup calibration data of all of our transmitters. Well, uh, this long story is not ended and we hope it will never end. Because for example, nowadays we are already working on the redesigning of all of our transmitters in order to keep them always up to date and in line with the new demands of the market. Okay, here we can see a graph. And uh, as I was explaining you before, we started marketing the range of Laumas weight transmitters completely made in Italy in the 2011. As we can see in the graphic, we doubled the sales in about two years, moving from about 6,000 pieces to about 12,000 pieces. And uh, in less than 10 years, the sales volume was four times bigger, causing the 90, uh, in the 2018 18 and 2019, uh, we put on the market about 21,000 transmitters, which uh, for a medium small company as we are, is not a few. As well as the growth of the sales of the transmitters, we have seen a big growth in the utilization of PLC. In this slide, we can see field buses market share in percentage during the last year. And we are just talking about our weight transmitters, not about other products. We have excluded from this calculation the analog output, but we can say for sure that it is still the most popular method for the connection to a PLC. At the same time, we have excluded the RS485 output because it is standard on board on all of our electronics and we don't know for sure how many of our customers really use it for the PLC connection. As we can see in the graphic, the distribution is dominated by Profinet IO with a 44% of the share, especially because uh, the PLC market leader in Europe is Siemens, which is uh, the Profinet developer. We are a European company so Profinet is the leader, it's quite linear. In the second position, we have the Ethernet IP, which is very, very popular in North America, because the brand Allen Bradley is the leader in that region. Then we can see that we have Ethernet TCP IP, Profibus, Modbus TCP, and so on. 
we will not spend much time about this argument, but if you are interested in learning more about it and about field bus diffusion and so on, I recommend you to take a look at the webinar PLC and field buses that we realized a few months ago and that is available on our website in the webinar section. Now we can see more in detail the actual production range starting from a general overview. First of all, we can say that almost all of our weight transmitters are equipped with a display and equipped for an easy calibration. They have one or more serial outputs, RS-232 or RS-485 with Modbus RTU protocol. They have logic inputs, relay outputs, analog outputs, and almost any field bus available on the market. We can divide the complete range in two main families. We have the single channels, including, for example, the TLE, the TLS, TLB, TLKWF, and so on. We have the multi-channels, so including TLB4, TLM8, and CLM8. And then we have the digitizer LCB that sets itself apart from the rest, and we will analyze it separately. During these years, we have realized more and more new models of transmitters, and at the same time, we invested a lot of time, money, and resources to obtain several product certifications. And I can say that thanks to these certifications, we are able to sell our transmitters worldwide, and we are able to satisfy almost all the requirements of the market. As we can see in this slide, our transmitters are OIML approved for legal for trade applications, according to NAWI, which is OIML R76 for non-automatic weighing instruments, according to AWI for automatic weighing instrument, for which we have evaluation certificates according to R61 and R51. We have the NTEP approval for the US market and the enemy approval for Australia and New Zealand. In this part, we are always talking about uh, legal for trade certifications. Then we have certifications for explosion proof areas according to international regulations like ATEX or IECX. And we also have the TRCU-012, which is specific for the Russian market. We have also obtained product certifications as for example, the EAC, always for the Russian market, the UL, which is specific for US and Canada, and the 3A, that is a certification according to sanitary standards. Like the development of the transmitters, even the obtainment of new approvals, approvals never stops. And we are now working to obtain the in-metro approval, which is specific for the Brazilian market. It's really hard work and it's quite complicated taking care of all of these certifications. But we have seen with the passing of the time that more we invest in the certificates and more our products are attractive for the market. Still talking about the importance of product certifications, we are members of several associations and consortia about field buses. They have tested and validated our communication protocols according to their standards. And again, this is a guarantee for you because when you choose a LAUMAS transmitter, you know that it has been tested and approved by every specific consortium. Always talking in general about our weight transmitters, we can now take a look at our PC software called Instrument Manager. This tool that is completely free of charges is downloadable from our website 
and is compatible with all of our transmitters and indicators. The connection between the transmitter and the PC has to be done via RS-485, so via, our, uh, via, via serial communication. Using the instrument manager, you can do many operations as, for example, uh, calibrating the transmitter and configuring any parameter available on it. You can monitor in real time the weight value and the status of relay outputs and logic inputs. You can memorize and archive all the setting of every transmitter and then, for example, copy it in a new device. You can update the firmware and do many other operations. If you still didn't do that, I recommend you to download it from our website because uh, I want, I, I'd like that you test it because it's uh, really useful. I repeat, it is free, so please try and let us know your comments because it's a tool that it is uh, still on development. So suggestions are always appreciated. Okay, so now it's time to analyze the weight transmitters in detail. And we will start from the single channels. Looking at the slide, we will find on the right column some features that are common to all of them, and on the left one, the specific ones. So TPS, TLE, and TLS have four direct input for the connection of load cells in parallel. They can be installed on the rail for back panel mounting, or directly in the field into an IP67 box that could also be ATEX approved for zone 2 and 22. This box can be offered with or without external keypad, depending on the transmitter to be installed inside and on the application. If we look at the column on the left, the first model that we will see is the TPS. I would say that it's an old style weight transmitter. It is blind, as you can see, and it has just acceptable analog output. The calibration must be done by using trimmers and dip switches. In my viewpoint, it's a quite obsolete product that we are still obliged to produce to manage some spare parts worldwide and to satisfy uh, some vintage customers, let's say, that don't like changing. Then we have the TLE that, in my viewpoint, is the natural substitute of the TPS. As we can see, it's the most cost-effective transmitter that we produce. It has on board one analog output and one RS, uh, RS485 output. And the calibration procedure is very simple and is done by using a small encoder and a small stick to select the zero and the full scale value. It has on board a display where we can visualize the millivolt volts coming from the load cell and the milliamps or the volts outgoing to the PLC. Then we have the TLS that is a more advanced TLE. It has an analog output and a serial output, but it also has two logic inputs and two relay outputs. The calibration is done by a simple keypad and on the display we can also visualize the weight value and this is very useful for the installer. Generally, I recommend to install the TLE or the TLS when the need is having a low cost solution just with analog or serial communication. And when the installation has to be done in the field because you can avoid the classical junction box and you can connect your load cells directly to the transmitter. Always talking about single channel transmitters, here we have two products especially made to be used as limiting devices 
in lifting applications. So we have the LCD2 and the TLU. They both have one load cell input, a display and a keypad for the calibration, and can be installed both in an IP67 box or on the array for back panel mounting. The LCD2 has one RS232 plus one RS485, has three relay output and one logic input, and is especially made for multiple bridge cranes to do a total weight checking. It means that you can connect up to four LCD2 all together, and you can limit the weight on the single cranes and on the sum of all of them. The TLU is uh, still made for lifting systems, but for single ones. So it has on board one analog output, one RS232, and one RS485. It has four relay outputs that are normally closed in order to be conform with the regulations about safety in limiting equipment. If you install it into its IP67 box, you can also use it for ATEX applications in zone 222. And the box, again, can be with transparent uh, front or with an external keypad. Still talking about single channel weight transmitter, here we are with uh, our TLB, which is the most popular and the most sold Laumas transmitter all over the world. But at the same time, it is also the Laumas product most widely copied. Uh, basically, this is not a good thing, but at the same time, it's a reason of pride because uh, it means uh, that we have done a good job with this product. As we can see, the, the TLB has just one load cell input and is especially made for the array mounting. The calibration can be done by using the front display and the small buttons located behind the front window of the, of the transmitter itself, or always by the PC program instrument manager. It has on board a standard DRS485 port with Modbus RTU, and then it is available with analog output or with almost any field bus present on the market. As we can see on the right side of the slide, we are talking of about 12 field buses, from the most popular, like the Profinet or the Ethernet IP, to niche ones, as for example, Powerlink or Circus 3. This great versatility in the communication with the PLCs, I would say a high reliability, a reasonable price also, and all the approvals that we have seen, so R67, 76, sorry, R51 and NTAP, for example, plus other various uh, product certifications as UL and EAC, made the TLB so popular and so attractive worldwide. I repeat, we are really proud of this transmitter model. Another member of the family of, multi ch of single channel weight transmitters are the TLK and the TLKWF. They both have one load cell input and are realized into an IP67 box. Again, the calibration is done by keypad and there is a small graphic display to visualize the weight. They both have four relay outputs and two logic inputs, standard on board. And they can also be equipped with a battery pack, internal or external. The only difference between these two models is given by the outputs available. So the TLK has just RS232 and RS485, while the TLKWF has also a Wi-Fi output. I would say that these transmitters are ideal for installation in the field when, uh, where you need uh, and high IP class, or are uh, all also very suitable for portable weighing systems, because they are quite small and they can be equipped with a battery. 
while the TLKWF is especially used when there is no possibility of installing cables for the communication. So a Wi-Fi output is the only option possible to manage that kind of systems. In this slide, uh, we can see some simple examples involving the TLKWF and the Wi-Fi transmission. You have to keep in mind that it can be connected to an existing Wi-Fi net, or it can be connected to a Laumas weight indicator with integrated Wi-Fi option. It can also generate its own Wi-Fi net, so it can be used in places where there is no Wi-Fi. And moreover, having an integrated web server, you could also connect its IP address to visualize the weight from your smartphone or from your laptop, for example. In any case, but this is uh, my opinion, especially concerning the industrial sector, uh, I feel that using Wi-Fi communication is not the better choice. So I recommend to use the Wi-Fi just in case of real needs because a wired communication is always more stable and more faster than a Wi-Fi one. We, we all have our smartphones and uh, we do not notice that we lose and get the Wi-Fi communication continuously. But with a device like this, you can notice it and uh, in an industrial line, you could have some problems. So I recommend, I repeat, use the Wi-Fi just in case of real need better who are in communication. The last born or the newborn in the range of single channel weight transmitters is the LCD. We call it digitizer because it can be installed integral to the load cells body and it transforms the signal of any analog output in digital. In the last years, uh, many of our competitors uh, started producing digital load cells. But very often, these digital load cells have a locked protocol developed by the producer. So it means that if you need to replace a damaged load cell, you are obliged to purchase the same identical product from the same identical company, or it doesn't work. Uh, as Laumas, we do not trust in this philosophy, and we think uh, that the products have to be versatile and compatible with all the others as much as possible. So that's one of the main reasons why we developed the LCD. As I said, you can connect it to any analog load cell made by any producer, and it grants a connectivity that no other digital load cell on the market has because it's available with almost any field bus from the most common to the niche ones so like our transmitters moreover uh, we have implemented in the lcd the bus io link that actually is not available for the other lamas transmitters as we can see in the slide it obviously has just one load cell uh, input. It has logic inputs and relay outputs on board, like all the other Laumas transmitters. As I said, it was born to be installed integrated to the load cell's body, but you can also connect it using a cable as any other transmitter. The enclosure is IP67, fully stainless steel, uh, sorry, fully stainless steel made in IZ-316. The calibration of the LCD, which is blind, has to be done by using the PC software called LCD Manager that is very, very simple to the instrument manager. Uh, sorry, that is very, very similar to the instrument manager. And the connection between the LCD and the, PLC, uh, and the PC is done via a micro USB port. Last, but not least, 
The LCB integrates the standard basic software that you can find on almost any Laumas device, but also a software that we call Load and that is especially made for filling system. So using the LCB manager, you can do all the setting for your batching and then transmit the data to the PLC. This is the only transmitter, made by Laumas of course, with uh, uh, such specific software on board. Okay, so uh, with the LCB, we have completed the panoramic about single channels, and it's time to move to multi-channel with transmitters. So we will start with the TLB4 and with the TLM8. As we have seen in the beginning, we put these transmitters on the market in the 2016. So a few, a few years later, the TLS and the TLB. And in our viewpoint, these are the evolution of the TLS and of the TLB. As the part number says, the TLB4 has four input channels and the, the TLM8 has eight input channels. Like TLB and TLS, they have buttons for the calibration, a display, to visualize the weight. Like almost all the other transmitters that we have seen, the, uh, the calibration can be performed by using the software instrument manager. And like the TLB, these transmitters are available with almost any field bus available on the market. So maybe you could ask a question like, uh, so which are the advantages of these multi-channel transmitters. Well, the load cells are not connected in parallel, but to the independent input channels that allow you to have several advanced functions. You can perform a digital equalization of the waving system, so there is no need of using trimmers to correct the weight value on the corners of your scale. You can visualize on the display the load distribution in percentage of every single channel and you can memorize it. For example, this is useful to understand if the load in your weighing system is well distributed. You can also memorize up to 50 events. So if, for example, the structure that you are weighing has a mechanical changing because of any reason, and the load distribution changes, you can get an alarm message and you can check at what happened because maybe the foundations are failing or something bad is happening. One more advanced diagnostic feature is that you can immediately detect if a load cell is defective and you can immediately see which one is defective saving a lot of money and of time. Very often, customers ask me if they can use individual input channels to manage different scales. Please pay attention on it because it's the key point. The answer is yes and no at the same time. And let me explain you why. These products are especially designed for single scales and the inputs are used to manage the advanced features that I have just described. If you want to use it for multi-scales, you could do it, but you have to keep in mind that you will lose all the features of the transmitter. So there is no digital equalization, there is no advanced diagnostic, you just get messages about uh, load sales failure, there is no load distribution. There is no weight on the display. There is no filter on weight. There are, you can't use logic inputs and relay outputs. It means that you will just transmit to your PLC via serial communication or via field bus, the unfiltered divisions of the single channels. And it means that you have to take care of filtering, 
calibrating, and so on, from your PLC. I think it's something that can be done, sure, but it can be done by skilled people. And I think it's a good option if you plan to realize several weighing systems, because you will save money in components, and you spend some money in the PLC development. If you have to realize not many weighing systems and you are not so skilled in PLC programming, I recommend you to use one transmitter for every single scale, because in the end, the advantages will be more than the save of a few more. Okay, to, to conclude this introduction about TLB and TLMA, uh, TLB4 and TLM8, uh, I'd say that they are both OIML approved according to OIML R76, uh, sorry, and they are both UL and EAC approved. After describing that common features and that key points about these two transmitters, we can check at the specific features of the, T, of the two models. So we can start with the TLB4. As we have seen before, it has four input channels and it has a standard onboard, one RS485 port, and it can have as option or request, analog output or anything else. It has three relay outputs and two logic inputs. It is especially made for the array mounting but it's the only transmitter that can also be installed in front panel. This kind of mounting installation is very useful when you have to realize legal for trade approved weighing systems, because the transmitter has to be the primary indicator of the weight. As we said before, it is OIML R76 approved, but it is also approved according to how we are 51, which is about automatic catch weighers, and R61, which is about automatic gravimetric filling machines. It is also approved uh, for Australia and New Zealand market. Moving to the TLM8, the TLM8 has eight inputs, as we said, and it has on board as standard one RS485 and one analog output together. And then you can add any other optional field bus available. It has five relay outputs and three logic inputs, so more than the TR before. And it can be installed on the array or directly in the field using its box IP67 that is available both with or without external keypad. Usually to simplify, because the choice is, is big and it's hard to detect which is the right product, I recommend the TLB4 for legal for trade application with front panel installation and the TLM8 for the installation in the field. But again, this is just a general uh, recommendation, a general suggestion because these products are so versatile that can always be used in any way and in any sector. So there is never a good choice or a bad choice. Okay, now let's take a look at the CLM8. We could say that the CLM8 is the third brother of the multi-channel family, and we usually call it smart junction because usually we install it in the field to connect one of, in, uh, of our indicators of the W series via RS485 communication, or we use it to connect directly a PC or a PLC, always via RS232 or RS485 communication. Compared with its brothers, it has no relay outputs, it has no logic inputs, and no field buses except the Ethernet TCP IP. So we would say that it's simpler than the others and more cost effective. As we can see in the photos, it can be installed in many different boxes and many different ways. So we have boxes in stainless steel, in ABS, in plastic, and so on. But we can also supply 
this product as a naked board so that you can install it in the box that you prefer. Features about diagnostic, digital equalization, and so on are same as TLB4 and TLM8. One of the main applications for this kind of transmitters are the way bridges, because with a small investment, you can, you can transform your analog track scale in a digital one, obtaining uh, great performances for a quite low cost. Even the CLM8 is OIML approved, according to R76, both if you use it alone, connected to a PC, or if you use it in combination with one of our indicators of the W series. In this slide, we can see a couple of application examples involving our multi-channel transmitters. So in the first one, on the left, we can see a CLM8 connected to a WayBridge indicator model WINUX VR. So we have the load cells connected to the CLM8 and the CLM8 connected to the indicator via RS485. Then in the center of the slide, we can see a CLM8 installed in the field close to the load cells, transmitting the weight data to a weight indicator WINUX. And in the last example on the right, we can see a TLM8 that is exchanging data with a PLC or a PC. In this slide, we can see another feature that is common for all of our multi-channel transmitters, and it's the inclinometer function. It consists of an inclined sensor connected via serial communication to our weight transmitters. The combination of the two devices allow you to compensate the weight variation given by the inclination of the weighing system up to a maximum of plus or minus 10 degrees. We have developed this useful function especially for onboard weighing systems because it can happen that a truck or a forklift, for example, are not working on a flat road. And we all know that if the ground is inclined, the weight value changes. So thanks to this feature, we can have a perfect weighing even in that conditions. If we talk about a truck, as we see in the slide, generally the complete system is composed by load cells, which are installed on the chassis to weigh the container. We can see the multi-channel transmitter receiving the signal from the load cells and connected to the inclined sensor. And then we have a weight indicator or an HMI located in the cabin of the truck and receiving the weight data from the transmitter and the data will be already compensated and corrected by the transmitter. Also, this kind of system is OIML approved for legal for trade applications. About this argument, I also take the occasion to remind you that the next week we will have a webinar especially made for this argument. So if you are interested in learning more about it, please go to our website and do the registration to attend it. To complete this presentation, this general presentation, we also prepared some simple slide uh, with uh, some summary tables that should be helpful for you during your daily work. The first one that we are seeing now is about PLC and field bus compatibility. So we can see PLC brands, we just put some, the most famous for us, but there are many others. And we put the protocols associated to these brands. So for example, we can see Siemens with Profibus, Profinet and IOLink. We can see 
rock with Alan Bradley with DeviceNet and Ethernet IP, Omron with Ethercat, and so on. Uh, I repeat that this chart is just indicative, because uh, in the truth, any PLC could be equipped with any field bus. But in any case, uh, it should be quite useful for you when you have to identify the bus available depending on the PLC, because I've rarely seen a Siemens PLC with an Ethernet IP output or vice versa. In the last slides of the presentation, we have put two comparison charts showing all of our weight transmitters divided in single channels in this slide and multi channels in this one. We will not check it carefully, but you will get it later, you know. Uh, we have divided so the slides in single and multi channels. And we have indicated for every single product the specific technical features about dimensions, divisions, AD converter, display, installation method, field buses available, certifications available, and so on. So again, I, I think it will be useful for you to identify the right transmitter depending on the specific applications and on the specific needs that you have. Okay, so I would say that our presentation is completed and now it's time for the question time. So I give back the floor to my colleague Diletta that is going to take care of reading your questions, if there are, and then I'll be pleased to try to answer to all of them. Okay, thank you Pietro. Uh, we already have some questions, so we can start and then in the meantime, if you have new ones, you can uh, go on writing. Okay, the first question uh, says, can any load cell be connected to a Laumas weight transmitter? Yes, of course. Any load cell with output in millivolts per volt. So no digital load cells can be connected to our amplifiers no load cells integrating 0 to 10 volts or 4 to 20 milliamps output. But any strain gauge load cell with millivolt volt output can be connected. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's go on. Um, another question is if it is possible to connect different digital load cell to a single way transmitter. As I tried to explain, maybe I was not clear, you cannot connect digital load cells to our weight transmitters. Another question is about the Wi-Fi. Yeah. What is the range of the Wi-Fi transmitter? I believe, um, I believe uh, this customer wants to know uh, the distance. Okay, okay. Well, I should check at the manual. If I well remember, it should be or 100 or 200 meters, more probable 200 meters, but it depends on the field where, where you install it. Because if you have a wall of armored cement, uh, you will get nothing. So it depends on, on the conditions of the environment. But I think that we are talking about 200 meters of free air. Okay, we have now another question about distance, but it's a completely different question. Uh, how much distance is required from the load cell installation to the transmitter? Well, it depends on the installation. There is not a limit. Uh, if you have load cells with six wires, you have no loss of signal so you can cover a higher distance. Then if you put, for example, a junction box and you go to a transmitter with six wires, you could also run 100 or 200 meters. This is not a big issue. Uh, usually the issue is given again by the environment conditions because the signal of the load cells is a very low signal, so it is easy to disturb it. It means that if you have to run a long distance, you have to put the load cells cable 
into a conduit completely separate from all the other cables, separate from inverters, from power cables, and so on, because higher is the distance and easier is that you will get some disturbs coming from the outside. Okay, thank you. Uh, now we have two questions about the instrument manager software. Okay. The first one is, is if it is possible to use the instrument manager to test, uh, for example, the analog output or a field bus. No. No, you can use uh, the instrument manager to calibrate the transmitters, to store the data, backup, do the updating and so on, but you cannot test the analog output or the, or the communication to a PLC. You should need a PLC where you can connect the cables, so it cannot integrate such a feature. Okay. And the second question about the instrument manager, if it if is if it can be used in Waybridge applications. Yes, it's not a software for Wave bridges. It's a tool to configure the instruments and the transmitters. So you can use it to configure the transmitter or the weight indicator that you are going to install in the wake bridge but you cannot use it to manage a wake bridge because it has not such uh, features, you know, it's not made for that. Okay, perfect, thank you. Uh, now we have a question about TLB4. Uh, some customers prefer to use a junction box with uh, load cells of the same capacity instead of a TLB4, uh, which supports four separate and independent uh, uh, ones due to the price. So the question is, what is the most um, important feature of TLB4? Well, uh, you know, the diagnostic features that I tried to describe before. Uh, we will not go in the specific of the prices, but if you consider the price of a junction box and of a TLB, and if you consider the price of the single TLB4, you will see that in the end it is more or less same. If you put the junction box, you haven't the diagnostic. So if a load cell fail, of course you get an alarm on the TLB display, but you have to run on the site and check at the load cells one by one to understand which one is damaged. If you connect the four load cells directly to the TLB4, you will see on the display that the load cell damage is the one connected to channel one or two. So it takes a while to do the replacement and you save a lot of time and money. You also have the other features that I described before as seeing the load distribution in percentage of the, on the corners, uh, the memorization of the events and so on. Okay, next question is, um, as the weight transmitters are continuously being improved, would it be possible to notify us of any changes or to publish them in the news area? Uh, I'm asking this customer is saying because many projects take a long time from system design to large scale implementation. Yes, of course, uh, it takes time. We always try to notify everything uh, to our customers uh, using social media, using a newsletter, doing events like this webinar, for example. So we always try to keep you up to date. The problem is that probably everybody receives too many newsletters and in the end, nobody notices the really interesting one. So the, the next time that you get a, a Laumas new letter, newsletter, check it carefully, because probably it will contain the information that you are looking for. Okay, um, another question. Do we have radio transmission modules that can be attached to a, to a weighted transmitter? Well, we have some old. We are trying to, re we have removed it from our website in case of specific needs, we can still supply it. But uh, nowadays, uh, when we need a radio communication, we recommend to use the Wi-Fi, so the TLKWF or the indicators W, 
with uh, optional Wi-Fi. Okay, thank you. I think we are going to uh, the end of the question. I still have one. Um, can we make RS-232 communication in CLM8 without using the W series indicator? Yes, of course you can. Uh, the RS-232 is available on the CLM8, so you can connect it directly to your PC or to your PLC, I suppose, your PC. And uh, on the manuals of our CLM8, it is are described the protocols available, so you can use the Modbus RTU or ASCII protocol or other protocols. It's just a matter of developing on your PC the right protocol to receive the weight data, but it's absolutely possible. Okay, thank you, Pietro. Uh, we still have another question. Uh, do we have units approved to SIL2, SIL3, PLC or PLD? Okay, that's another nice question and it's a very complex argument. We have now realized a safety manual about our TLM8 and the safety manual uh, we are also validating with a notified body with the TOOF the data that we have calculated for this kind of weight transmitter. All of these data are especially made to obtain a seal value. Nowadays, I think we'll not be able to obtain the level, the performance level, uh, a so high performance level, but soon we will be able to bring you all the data about what is possible. But in any case, uh, I always recommend to keep in mind that to obtain a seal two or a seal three system, not only the transmitter has to reach specific values and must have specific characteristics. Uh, the transmitter is just a link of the chain. So your complete chain will have to comply with that levels and uh, it's not so easy. Anyway, I'm not so expert about the argument and uh, what I can say is that yes, soon we will provide you some official documents stating all the numbers and all the data about this issue and we will be able to provide you a safety manual that will describe all of these features about safety. Okay, thank you Pietro. This is really the last question about TLB4. Uh, the question is can the TLB4, uh, can, sorry, the TLB4 transmit the percentage weight of the connected load cell to a PLC? No, this is not possible. So nowadays you can just visualize the, um, the load percentage on the display of the transmitter. We are now working on a new firmware version that we hope to put on the market in March. It will, be, it will extend some data from the TLB4 to the PLC, so to the field bus. And at that time, so in a few months, you'll be able to receive and acquire such data on the PLC, but not today. Okay, thank you, Pietro. Uh, we don't have any more questions, so I believe we are going to uh, the end of this, uh, of this meeting. Uh, if uh, you have any other questions today or in the following days, uh, you know you can always write us at uh, sales at laumas.it. Uh, I believe this is all, so I thank you for your time, for being with us uh, today, and uh, also from Pietro. Yes. Uh, see you soon to the next event. Thank you very much to everybody and keep well. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.